Hi, this is Professor McLaughlin with a initial lecture explaining and describing the practice area of wills, trusts, and estates. While this uh, area of law uses lots of legal lingo, fancy words, Latin words, do not be put off by it. It is basically about human beings in, we'll say, the United States and specifically California who have assets when they die and they either have an estate plan with a will or a, a financial advisor has helped them or a lawyer has helped them set up a trust. They have contemplated life insurance and what to do with their property and they know what they want to do with it and they spell that out. And an estate does not need to be big. It can be small. It can be no, an estate of nobody famous. It can be you or me. And while a lot of the examples in this book do describe individuals with uh, lots of different assets, that is not always the reality. And everybody has things that will outlive them things that will not go to the afterlife with them. And those things can either go somewhere because the person who died directs them through a plan, through a will or a trust or other devices, mechanisms that they've utilized um, for a place to go. And so I wanted to give you this overview, while this is not from your textbook currently, I wanted to give you an overview and uh, the majority of the slides and the lectures will be based on your textbook, but where the textbook falls short, I will supplement with outside slides. So you have an estate right now. It could be modest. It could be thing. It could just be a vehicle. You may not even have property and that estate is meaningful and the law gives you the right and the power to say where all those things will go after death and the law also allows you rich or poor to avoid the whole process altogether and those the whole probate process and those are the kind of things that we are going to be talking about this summer. Much of what you'll see from the law that you'll learn this summer is that people want to control stuff. They want to control their stuff. They want to say who gets what. And they don't want to pay taxes to the government. They want money to remain with the family and not get paid out to a lot of lawyers or a contested will uh, situation. And I believe optimistically and in the most ideological positive way that uh, people would like to provide for their family after they are gone. And those are some of the things we'll be talking about this semester. But ultimately, we're really talking about controlling stuff, avoiding taxes, and taking care of family in all uh, the meanings of that phrase. So a will is a document that states a person's intentions 
for how property should be divided after their death. And many people die without a will. That is unnecessary. This semester, I will show you a, a resource where you can get a form will, F-O-R-M will, and you will fill it out this, this semester, this summer. You don't have to use it. And you will then have a say in the distribution of your estate after death. Without a will, and we'll look at this as well, you will die in test state. However, we will learn that some things, some pieces of property pass without a will. And they pass, meaning they go from ownership of the decedent, the person who passed away, and they, the property passes to someone else or to an entity, to a trust. And We'll cover all that this semester. One of the big and most interesting things is capacity. Did someone who was very, very old know what they were doing when they married that fourth husband who was 30 years younger than her, God bless her, and she left everything to uh, this fourth husband. And there were children cut out of the will and all the charities that she had cared about her whole life. You know, did she have capacity when she created that will to understand what she was doing? And as I mentioned, you don't always need a will to tell survivors, banks, insurance companies, lawyers, where you wanted the property to go. So we have things called will substitutes. These are ways to avoid probate. And hopefully every time I'm saying a word you don't know, you are pausing the video, writing it down, looking it up in the glossary. This is a very language intensive area of the law but it's contained, it's a contained universe. I will say that once you get a hang of the words used frequently, you, you've got it. So will substitutes um, when you title your property as a joint tenancy the, and you pass, the property auto automatically passes when you die, property automatically passes to the joint tenant. If you have a life insurance, or if I have a life insurance policy, and I name my oldest child the beneficiary, I don't need to have a will or tell anybody what to do with those insurance proceeds. They will go to my beneficiary, my oldest child. If I have a living trust, or if I, living means inter vivos, during your life. You created a trust during your life. You have an inter vivos gift. You gave a gift during your life. Nobody can take that back. If I want to give $50,000 or $20,000 to somebody, that gift, I, that is no longer my cash, and I give it to somebody else. If you live in a community property state, or if you have a transfer on death deed, and just slow kind of these words down, inter vivos, while alive, during life, a transfer on death deed. I die, something transferred, and this deed makes me think of things like property, something important, and all of these we call will substitutes. So let's get into some of the other heavily used terms. The person who passes away is the decedent. The decedent, the deceased person created a will. So we call that person the 
testatrix, a person who made a will, a testamentary document that says what I want to do with my property after I'm no longer breathing. We'll go through this in great detail, but we really need a written document. There's very few exceptions. California even has some rules about video wills. Uh, they aren't heavily used. We need some witnesses to make sure you weren't under duress when you created this will. Need some dates, a signature. We want to make sure everybody was capable, understood, had legal capacity when this will was written. And the will should identify a person, an individual, who will take care of the distribution of property. And that person is a personal representative. We all have stuff. You have stuff. You have, you have fancy shoes. I see you in the classroom. You have fancy glasses. You have fancy water bottles that filter your water and are sustainable. Bicycle, skateboard, surfboard, devices. This is your estate. I have some of those things. And that's my estate. And this area of the law allows you to describe what you want done with those things after you pass. You should know the state of California allows a holographic will, which is a handwritten will. You can write a will right now. If you, you don't even need to pause this video. You could just take out a piece of paper, date and sign it. And at the top say, I leave everything to my, I was going to say my professor, please don't do that. I was going, it was going to be funny. And now I said it, maybe I'll have to edit that out. Leave everything to your cat, to your family, to a sibling, to your parents, to your partner, your special friend, your bae. Probate can be formal or informal, but what is probate? Probate is the, well, we have probate court. That's where all these things are happening. And probate is the process for taking care of the, you controlling your stuff after you're gone and the stuff. Let's dig a little deeper. We have beneficiaries. I told you in my life insurance policy, if I name my oldest son, my bank account, I name my partner. Those are beneficiaries and they are going to receive the property under the will or it's going to be a will substitute. I don't even need to read the will. It'll automatically go to a beneficiary. Devisee, this is a special word we use when real property transfers. And legatee is not used as much, but it's a person who receives a gift of personal property under a will. If you die without a valid will, you die intestate. And we'll look at the laws of intestacy. And one golden rule is that if you die without a will, some of your property, if not all, and that would include cash, goes to the state of California. And that's the other thing this area of law is helping people avoid is uh, enriching the state when I could enrich my family. We have heirs. Those are people who are going to receive a gift of real property. We have next of kin, all terminology of intestacy, closest blood relatives of the decedent. But these are all if the person died without a will. Wills can be changed, making them ambulatory. You can write a amendment to the will. You could change it. We call that a codicil. And then letters of instruction are included when a lawyer drafts a will. And those documents talk about funeral, 
burial, organ donation, not really about property transfer or control of anything other than those last things that happen to you when you leave your human body, which is what happens to your organs, and how would you like your death celebrated through the funeral and burial plans. And some religions are quite strict, and so this becomes very important, how the funeral is performed, when it is performed, and what those burial plans look like. And as we become a more pluralistic society with people from many different religions living together and dying, um, these letters of instruction become important. You may have very special rules for how you need, how you want to be um, buried. Some of the main things that this area of law do is help people avoid taxes and assist people to use the law to legally avoid the taxes that can legally be avoided. And you may give away all your property, pay off all your debts, and there may be things left over. We call that the residu residuary estate. It's the residual. It's the leftover. You know what perhaps residue is. You drank your delicious homemade iced tea, and you can see after you drank it, some of the tea clings to the cup, and that's the residue. Your residuary estate left over, and your estate plan allows you as a deceased person to control even where that goes after death. You can refer to it as whatever's left over goes to Goodwill Industries or goes to the feline rescue mission or a domestic violence shelter. Don't even have to name the amount. It's just whatever's left over. We also are going to review statutes that prevent you from denying a spouse their rightful share of your property, but you can always disinherit children. A really important concept that you may have heard in some of your other paralegal classes is this idea of fiduciaries someone who's in a position of trust, who manages someone else's stuff like it was their own. Also, in the probate area, fiduciaries frequently take over a minor or incompetent persons. So the structure of the estate, it's all the stuff in the middle of the triangle, the big triangle in the middle of your screen. We have the testator who wrote the will. We have our letters of instruction to say how we're gonna be buried and the appointment of the personal representative who's gonna help gather all of our stuff after death and make sure everybody gets what they're entitled to according to the testator's wishes. And then finally, we're going to wrap up the semester this summer looking at trusts. These are very important legal vehicles that are created in order to hold property for the benefit of another. You can hold a house in trust. You can put your entire estate in trust. If you have a disabled child, you could have a special needs trust. These trusts are created through the will. That's a testamentary trust. Or you could create it during your lifetime, an inter vivos trust. And the structure of the trust looks a lot like the estate or the will 
but it functions differently. The property is put in the big triangle trust estate. That's similar. Trustee is the person with the fiduciary duty to manage the trust. That could be the testator before they die, or it could be somebody else. It could be a bank. And then we have beneficiaries who are going to benefit. These could be children. They could be charities. And we'll take a look at that at the end of the semester. Really, in this first chapter, you're looking a lot at property, personal property, real property. You're reviewing or being introduced to concepts of title, how property is held. Much of Will's, Will's I'll, I'll say the Will's part of this class, in, it, uh, leans very heavily on uh, concepts that we have um, adopted from our the legacy of English common law. We want to know that our property is going to remain in our family, that it's going to pass to people that we're related to, and that uh, we'll be able to control that because we have title and we're passing title to someone else at death. We mentioned this, uh, the trustee is the person in charge of the trust, taking care of property for the benefit of another. The personal representative is that person identified in the will by the testator who's going to carry out the terms of the will, going to sell the house or collect, collect all the um, accounts, marshal the property into one place where it can be distributed. And then once again, we'll have these will substitutes, a life insurance policy. We're married in a community property state. We gave gifts during life. And there's no need for a will in order for this property to pass. And that's it. I look forward to seeing you more online.